this is Nurse Jet, Nurse of the Truth. I hope everyone's having a great day. So, to start off with, I want to tell people thank you so much for subscribing. Also, tell your friends and family about me. So, like, share, and subscribe with my videos. And also, hit the notification button. Nurse Jet is making a ton of videos, but I'm going to be working a lot at the hospital, so I won't be able to make as many videos. So, I'm trying to shove in a lot today. I probably won't be making hardly any this weekend. So, just bear with me. Get the word out. Um, thank you for all the kind comments that people have been giving me about my videos and my um, information. Now, digging into the topic. Cain, the heretic son that kills Abel. And the blood of Abel cries out from the ground. Really? Is that the real story? Do you really know where the actual story came from? Well, get ready, truth seekers. If you are a Christian and you just stumbled up on my videos, I am not here to offend because I was a Christian. I'm no longer a Christian. Because I know that these things come from different parts of the world. But I do know it's Anunnaki based. We have to come to grips about what has happened to us and our origins, people. It's a must. It's a must. Now, Cain. Now, according to the Hebrew text of the Bible, in the biblical version, Cain is the firstborn son of the created Adam and Eve. And Cain grew up and became a farmer and killed his brother Abel. The second born became a shepherd. It is then explained to us that the brothers made sacrifices to God. One, they both made sacrifices to God. Each offering the best of their own produce, but God favor favored Abel's sacrifice better instead of Cain's. After which Cain killed his brother Abel and lied about killing him to God and as a result was cursed and marked for life with the earth left cursed to drink Abel's blood and Cain was no longer able to farm the land and Cain's punishment was that of a fugitive and a wanderer and he received a mark from God commonly referred to as the mark of Cain, representing God's promise to protect Cain from being murdered. We've all been told that black people were the curse of Cain. How ridiculous is that? That's the most absurd thing I've ever heard in my life. But that's what we've been told. So, most people are aware of the Bible's version of the story of Cain, but few are aware of what became of Cain in the end. What happened to Cain in the end? This is the version of Cain given to us by the Hebrews, but the Sumerians, however, have a different take on the story of Cain. Now, the Sumerians were people in Iraq. They say that the first five cities of civilization started in Iraq. Number one, Irdu, where Enki dwelt. And Enlil and Anana, Marduk. So, These people wrote versions of things that happened. And over time, as different cultures came up, like Assyria and Babylon and, you know, Egypt and Hebrew and all, they all had different aspects of these gods and what they did in their time period. So, Hebrew was not even on the scene these particular people, they say, were not even on the scene when Samaria was going strong. 
No such thing. These stories from Samaria and texts that were found under King Arshavenopal's library in Nineveh are thousands of years old and were the first written documents of these stories that came down to us that are in our King James Bible. Trust me when I tell you. These things were written at least uh, 1,500 years to 2,000. Could be more. I'm not sure. Who knows? But we're going to get the real deal. Now, the Sumerian version of Cain and Abel is important and worth considering because that the father of Hebrews, Abraham, originally was a Sumerian who came from the city-state of Ur. Being that he was born and raised in the Sumerian city-state of Ur, later rejecting his father's religion and leaving to from his own religion, there's a good chance Abraham may have been taught the Sumerian version of the Cain and Abel story. According to the Sumerians, as translated and interpreted by Zacharias Ditchin, a Azerbaijani born American author, the story of Cain, known as Cain, K A dash I N, also probably E Mesh, E M E S H, by the Sumerians, is slightly different. Here goes. Emesh is a Sumerian god of vegetation. He created alongside the god Enten at the wish of Enlil to take responsibility on earth for woods, fields, sheepfolds, and stables. He is identified with the abundance of the earth and with summer. According to the translated tablets, there were Sumerian gods called Anunnaki, meaning those who came from heaven to earth. All that means is from the sky. This is because instead of actual gods, they were more astronauts from another planet. These Anunnaki astronauts were in desperate need of workers, so they began dabbling with the DNA of Earth creatures in hopes of making a worker intelligent enough <clears throat> to follow instructions and physically able to undertake the workloads. After a few disastrous attempts, they began to create the first Earthlings by combining the genes of a possible Homo erectus with their own genes. Watch my video about, in the Sumerian tablets, I made it yesterday, that Enki and then Hursag kept their deformed creatures. It talks about this in the Sumerian tablets. A lot of failed attempts, but they still kept them and gave them jobs. <clears throat> It was later when one of the Anunnaki named Inki was out on a boat with his vizier, Izamud, surveying the marshlands that he saw two female earthlings bathing at the river bank. He had his vizier land the boat near so that he could step on dry land and one of the young earthling females approached him and offered him a tree fruit. Inki was a Sumerian god of wisdom, fresh water, intelligence, trickery, mischief, crafts, magic, exorcism, healing, creation, fertility, fertility, and art. And his name means Lord of the Earth. Inki mated with her. He called the second young earthling girl to come to him and she offered him berries from the field that she gathered. He mated with her as well. Impregnated.
impregnating them both, he awaited nine lunar cycles until they both gave birth on the 10th. See, ladies, when we have our babies, they go by 10 lunar months from our period. And then we have the baby in the ninth month. The young earthling girl gave birth in the dawn to the day of a boy, Adapa. And the second impregnated earthling girl gave birth in the dust on the same day to a girl named Titi. Now listen, let's recap. Inky was with his vizier, like a vizier of the pharaohs, the second in charge. He goes out. He sees two earthlings, and he mates with them both, and he gets them pregnant. And one has a dappa, and the other one has TT. Inky made his vizier swear to secrecy as he took and raised the newborns as foundlings. He claimed to have found them in reed baskets and took them in as orphans. These new kind of earthlings proved to be intelligent and grew up in the likeness of their father, Inky and Anunnaki. So, when you see in the scriptures where it says in the Genesis, make us in our image and our likeness. They were the first civilized humans. These new civilized earthlings in the image and capability of the gods will be able to maintain the fields and shepherd their sheep flocks. This solved the problem of feeding the Anunnaki and Ajiji who were working to gather gold to send to their home planet Nibiru. The first new civilized intelligent earthlings and part Anunnaki earthlings, Adapa and Titi, made it and had two sons. So, earthlings. Anunnaki mated with earthlings. Two women, the two earthlings, and they had these two children, the two girls had the two babies, one had a boy and one had a girl. Because of the DNA manipulation, because prior they were not able to procreate. Because of the DNA manipulation, now they have the genes of the Anunnaki. So now Adapa and Titi, the children of Inki, both the girl and the boy, children of Inki, have two sons. Adapa and Titi, Inky their father, and now the two sons, Ka'aim and Abel, are Inky's grandchildren. The twins named Ka'aim and Abel. Ka'aim is taught crop cultivation and Abel is taught shepherding and wool making by the Anunnaki. After having learned the arts taught to them and produced from their labors, a celebration of first was made by the Anunnaki. Both Cain and Abel presented the first fruits of their labor taught to them. See, things were taught to them. And as you can see, even through Judaism, the first fruits of labor. So, in cultures past, whatever they grew and whatever they harvested, they took a little bit and they offered it as the first fruits. Thank you. Thank you. 
Cain presenting the first grains from his fields and Abel presenting the first lamb born. The lamb offered by Abel was given more praise than Cain's grains. Cain became jealous and bitter. Cain only became more bitter when his brother Abel boasting how his offering was preferred over Cain's. The twin brothers bitterly argued in the winter through the spring when the lands were stricken with a drought, needing water for the herds. Abel shepherded them into the irrigation canals made by Cain for his crops. This greatly angered Cain and the two fought, first by spitting on each other until they began fist fighting. This was when Cain picked up a rock and struck his brother Abel in the head, killing him. His mother, Titi, had a dream of what happened and told her husband, Adapa. Together they went to where Cain and Bel and Abel dwelt in Eden and discovered Cain still sat next to his brother's body. He covered the face of his dead son with mud and reported what happened to Inky. Inky arrives and is extremely angered as he confronts Cain. Inky instructs Adapa and Titi, his children, how to bury the body of Abel with a pile of stones as is the custom of the Anunnaki. The grieved parents mourned for 30 days and 30 nights. And as you see, even back in ancient times, you have stones over the grave. Cain was brought and tried before a panel of seven judges, where Marduk, Inky's son, demanded that he be put to death. This was when Inky revealed his secret of mating with earthlings, which begot Adapa and Titi, who then begot Cain and Abel. Upon learning this, his son Marduk broke out in laughter and agreed to the sentencing of Cain to be exiled from civilization. The panel of seven judges banished, banished Cain from Eden, where he heads eastward into the land of wandering. The panel not only banished him, but his generations to follow. The Anunnaki also marked him by altering his life essence so that he and his generations to follow could not grow a beard. So Cain, with his sister wife, Awan, wandered eastward away from Eden. Because you see, Adapa and Titi had many more children after Cain and Abel. And if you read in the book of Jubilees that quote unquote were written by the Hebrews, it has this name of the girl. Cain remained exiled, save for one time when he was searched out and brought back to Eden by the Anunnaki to his father Adapa's deathbed. On his deathbed, Adapa has trouble seeing, so he felt the faces of the two sons, knowing Cain had no beard. Finding his beardless son, Setai, he blessed him as his heir stating that three branches of his seed shall survive mankind's great calamity. He put his left hand on Cain and declared because of Cain's sin that he has lost his birthright, but from his seed seven nations shall arise and thrive in distant lands set apart from the rest of humanity. Adapa added, because he killed his brother by a stone, so shall he die by a stone. Adapa then died. And Adapa was buried, and it is presumed that Cain was then returned to the distant east by the Anunnaki, and then the flood came. According to the Sumerians, 
Some were earthlings, were saved by escaping to high mountains. So, as you can see, that is the story. And you only get a part of the story through the Hebrew scriptures, but not all of the story. Now, I do believe another, another writing of the same story, it shows that Cain didn't kill Abel. So, you know, now you get the real story. So, which is it? See, in the Garden of Eden, there's one God. You have Adam and Eve. It tells you the story of how Inky made it with two females. And out of these two earthling females, you had Adapa and Titi, which were Inky's children. And these two children had sons. And that is Inky's grandchildren, Cain and Abel. He loved them both. But he does believe in justice and righteousness. And a full trial. So Cain leaves. And you know in the scriptures when this Lord said, when all this happened, put a mark on him. To make him different from the rest that you could tell. So now we have it in the scriptures that the Lord said that no one touches him. Vengeance is mine. That no one should harm him. So, it's kind of funny now because God, this monotheistic God that we've all been taught about, kicks him out of the garden. But then protects him on the other hand. Now you know the truth. What are you going to do with the truth now? Inky is the grandfather of Cain and Abel. Inky was the father of this Adam and Eve. Cain, his bloodline is still here today, but the Bible writers knew of this information. And they made Cain's bloodline look like the bloodline of Satan. And then on top of that, when it gets down to Noah and these three sons, 
in the scripture. Canaan. Ham. Are supposed to be the black people. Kill them. Kill all the Canaanites. Because why? Because the Canaanites, quote unquote, what we were told, were black people. So therefore, when you kill all the blacks and you put all of your people in that part of the world that can be yours. And then... In Genesis chapter 10, if my memory serves me correctly, you have Ashkenaz. How does that work? Because in the very beginning of that time period, there was no Ashkenaz. But see... When the writers put it together in the 1600s and give it to you as the word breathed, Holy Ghost. Because see, my friends, Canaan is on the African north east horn of Africa. It's not called the Middle East, that part. The only reason why they called it the Middle East is because when Britain was sailing its ships to the other part of the world, that was the halfway point. And they called it the Middle of the East. And you know, even to this day, there are black people that live in Israel you don't see them very much because they want to put them in the nasty parts of town. And they call them the N-word. The Bible was written specifically for that one cause, my friends. Do your research. Open your mind and speak the truth because the truth has to be told. Until next time, Hotep and Ashe, and God thought will always bring me wisdom to give to you. Have a great evening, guys. We'll see you later.